We are here at the Venice Pier with a lot of history on Venice to happen, you know, and uh, we have a special guest here. But first of all, I'm gonna say thank you so much, everyone, for the support, all the subscribers, all the people who is leaving a comment and liking, and uh, keep pushing forward. Let's share the videos. Let's tell people to subscribe the channels, you know. I'm here with Seven Adams, and we're gonna have a real talk now. We're gonna have a real talk now, heart to heart. A lot of things happen here in the Spear, and that's why we decided to do the interview here. And uh, yes, yeah, Seven, uh, how can we start? Like, let's start like here. Basically, I want to say how, because uh, I know you grew up like away from your dad. You know, and uh, how was this part like of seeing your daddy getting famous, you know, like and skating everywhere and people talking about him and you were not a part of his life like for a while, you know, like. I honestly, you guys, like growing up, I viewed my dad as my dad. I don't think I really ever realized how level he of fame he might have been at or was at, you know, until maybe I was like 18, 19, because I just always grew up being like, it's just my dad, you know. And he skates really good. And he surfs even better. And that's just kind of how I viewed it. But when I was 18, 19, I started to realize like, I started getting these messages on Instagram, especially after my dad passed away, you guys, I got thousands of messages from people that were like, I changed my life because of your dad. I got into, I'm a, you know, I'm religious now, or I got out of prison and I take care of my family. And then I started to realize like the footprint that my dad left on this earth. And I was like, whoa, it's fucking pretty cool, dude. Like, um, that's like even bigger than skating. Like he, he changed people's lives, you know? And, um, that was definitely like a turning point for me. And then obviously coming down here and seeing all the love and support my family gets definitely shows it. And uh, how old were you like here when you uh, lost your dad? I was 21 when I lost my dad, you guys, back in 2014. It's actually crazy we're here because uh, this is like kind of where the saddest day of my life so far and like, kind of the most love I've ever felt in the same time was right at this pier. This is where we did the first paddle out. I remember me and Bagel, I think we might have gone one or two pockets up, but we shot a really, really cool photo from here that I like always cherish. I, I feel like my dad really painted the sky for us that night. It's like crazy sunset. Um, but yeah, man, this pier, it's gnarly for me to be here. I definitely feel it. Jay was the most ripping Z-boy that there ever will be, and nobody will ever replace Jay. Skateboarding wouldn't be what it is today without Jay Adams. Had an embodiment of self-respect that he was projecting, and he was that man. His legacy will hopefully touch thousands, if not millions of people. We're so sorry to not have him in our company anymore, but we're all rejoicing in the fact that he is exactly where he wants to be. There's thousands of people here on the beach today. Everyone that came out today, you know, I hope that your life, Jay Adams, will touch theirs and it will change their lives for all eternity. The first time I met Jay was when he was probably about six. He paddled up to me. He said, hey, are you Jeff Ho? And I went, yeah. And he goes, nice ride. He started off as my anti-hero when I was a little kid looking up to him. And later on in life, the path he took and the peace that he found at the end, he became my hero. Then Jay would always tell us, you know, you're coming from dysfunctional family. He was like, doesn't matter, man, shine. Go ahead and, and, and be you. Let me be myself and let me be confident in myself and believe in myself. And that's what Jay installed in me. Jay wasn't afraid to die. Jay was a true Christian man when he died, you know. Jay was probably never afraid to die, even in his man. You know, we talked about that. And uh, he was finally in a good place, you know. But the one thing is he never forgot where he came from, you know, and that's his neighborhood right here. 
and he was a quality man when he died. 100%. Jay is radical. <laughs> Jay Adams, the original. Jay was inspirational. The number one Z-boy out there, Ripper! Jay Adams was gnarly. Jay was and Jay is. And Jay Adams will be Venice Originals for life. How was for you like to feel and see how many people came in and feel all the love? Like how did you feel about it? Boggled, baffled, I don't know. I think my head was spinning at a million miles an hour at that time and I just was like kind of astonished. But I, I think we had a few thousand people on the beach. It was pretty crazy. And then it was definitely the biggest paddle out I've ever been to. We had the, the lifeguards came and did the hose for us. They let me jump off the pier that day. Um, just seeing all the love and support from all the old skaters too coming in, like it was crazy. It was a, a good overwhelming, like the best overwhelming feeling. But I was also going through a lot of stuff that I, I wasn't, I was having a hard day. It's a hard time, man. I, yeah. Are you, I'm sorry, what was, what happened? Like what were we going through? Like, tell me. Just the loss of my father, you know, and, um, just kind of dealing with some other stuff too that was involved in the whole situation and yeah man I mean just mainly the loss of my dad that day it's crazy that was it's fucked it's gnarly I don't know how to describe it yeah, it just so was basically a hard time but always. all the love and support that came a soy bagel Billy Euron Dan and Terry at Juice, you know, like I'm missing so many names and I could probably spit out names for another hour, but just everybody from Venice, bro, that came through Santa Monica, everybody in California Simon, came through. You know? Sci-Fly, you know, Jim Muir. Jim Muir, huge, Jesse Martinez, there was so many people, bro. The amount of love I felt that day was cool. Jeff Ho, like, like you know. All the legends. It's crazy, bro. All yeah. these people I grew up looking up to, too. Yeah. Like, and just there for me and my family. It's insane. It's it was special. That's why I say it was one of the hardest days, but the most love I've ever felt. Venice is a special place. It's definitely home for the Adams family. So, Michael, how are you? Oh. Michael, come here really quick. Step in. With my bicycle? Yes. And uh, how was for you like to work with Nathan Fletcher? It was, was cool. I love Nathan. It's the man, yeah. The man. Nathan so the sick. Fletcher, man, and your dad was his baby his babysitter. <laughs> That's, uh, I know. That's, that's so crazy. Movie, yeah. Is that uh, Jay babysit uh, babysit uh, Nathan? No, he babysit Nathan. 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 Yeah, Nathan yeah. I don't know if Nathan was Seven's babysitter, but he may have been. I mean, potentially, I met your mom. bro. I met your <laughs> Might mom still be my babysitter. <laughs> I met Sam through uh, through Nathan. Your mom is super cool, and uh, yeah, that's the story. Nathan's so sick. Uh, and that movie you made is dope too. Thank bro. you. Amazing no, movie, super yeah. sick movie. If you guys haven't seen that, you need to go check that out right now. Can you Nathan Fletcher. It's called Heavy, Heavy Water, and it's all about really the movie is is a homage to Jay. It's about how Jay influenced modern surfing, and that we would you know it goes from Jay to Christian Fletcher to yeah. Nathan to. Uh, I don't know, everybody else that came afterwards who didn't appreciate at the time how radical these guys were. And, you know, when Jay started busting airs and then basically Christian was led from Jay in many ways and then Christian totally fucked up professional surfing. They couldn't handle it. No, they couldn't.
How was growing up with your mom without your daddy around like here? Tell me, please. It's weird. You know, I mean, be straight up, there was a lot of anger held in on that one. When I was a little kid, obviously, I respected everybody. Loved my dad as Jay Adams, but, you know, I obviously wanted him to be more around, and that's where I got blessed later on in life. He got to come into my life, and we had a great relationship, you know? But growing up was hard. It's why I became a 100% surfer, you guys. I skate a little, but not as much. I more surf. And it was because I was like, oh, I gotta beat my dad in surfing. I'm not gonna pass him in skating. Fuck, boys, my dad's gnarly at surfing. He's so gnarly at surfing. Yeah, gnarly. If I get as good as him, I'll be stoked. <laughs> You're probably gonna get there. You have a lot of time. I'm trying. And uh, how, is, how is Samantha? How is your mom? My mom. She's fighting you guys right now. My mom's just got diagnosed with stage four breast cancer and it's a pretty fucking gnarly pill to swallow. Um, she is a fighter though. She's dealt with the Adams family her whole life so she knows how to do these battles and she's gonna kick cancer's ass. And um, I do wanna share this too, you guys. We do have a GoFundMe live right now for my mom. You can personally message me on the Adams family 316 and um, yeah, just, even if you messaged my mom, Sam Bag, on Instagram, she would be stoked. She loves the love. So. Tell me how is Samantha? Samantha. How is like in relation, like how is, how is she as a mother? Best mother ever, man. She, my mom was so cool that she used to send packages to Hawaii for sci-fi to tag up when my dad was in trouble and stuff and then, you know, locked up and Sci-Fi would send them back as my dad's presents for my birthday and Christmas. That was one thing I always appreciated through all the hardships that they had. My mom never talked down on my dad. Always talked him up and always kept that spirit. Eye. And that's why I was just like so excited to have my relationship with my father. I feel like sometimes when things like that happen, the family will divide a little bit. And I always really appreciated my mom back and my dad through all that. So my mom... My mom's like superwoman, <laughs> but yeah, she's she's a very rad human. I know exactly how it is because I grew up without my father too. So, did you feel like she was your mom and daddy for a while? I felt like she crushed it as my mom, and then I felt like I was very blessed in the town I grew up in in Santa Cruz. I had a lot of role models in the surf and skate community that kind of got to play a little bit of a father figure. Also, I had a guy named John Van Sagern come into my life that was really, really big, you guys. Like, he was my best friend's dad, and um, he taught me a lot of really, really good things in life, you know? But my mom definitely tried to do her best to be both roles. But she was such a good mom, she didn't even need to. She crushed it. But yeah, that was definitely a challenge. It was weird growing up, obviously. You know, it's not an easy one, but... We're all dealt the cards we're dealt, and we just have to know how to play them. So, I'm grateful for everything, man. I'm just happy that me and my father, before he left us here, we got to have such a solid relationship. I felt like I had had my dad my whole life by the end of his life. And that's, that's fucking awesome, man. He really helped me be a better man in life, too. I think for me, when I, because I, I was not legally adopted at 15, but I was morally adopted by the man that I said earlier, John Van Sagern and Sheila Van Sagern. And I had a lot of animosity towards my mom after that. We had a really rocky relationship. And I mean, that's probably one of the worst episodes of my life. But, you know, my dad, like, straight up knocked some sense into me and was all, you need to figure it out and forgive her. And, like, that was one of the biggest things ever. And then just everything that, like the sessions that I got to have with my dad surfing down at tracks or PCCs and some Malibu and stuff, some of these waves, like just him teaching me things. I remember going to Huntington Beach with the Hernandezes, Nick and Jason, and like doing this Volcom contest and my dad like getting to be at one of my contests and telling me like, oh, I'll do that and this. And I'm like, it was just sick, man. The message Jay Adams left you here, like you're one of the things that I really remember, and the uh, Hayden McKenna brings in his interview is forgiveness, love, you know? 
Even though people make mistakes, people do stuff against you, let's open your heart like here. Let's like forgive, you know, and understand. Pretty much we have two options in our lives, like we can get a wound with the problems we have, or we can get wiser. And I think the best choice is get wiser, and I think that's what happened to you, you know? 100%. I grew a lot through this whole process. It's that's amazing. for sure. And I think my dad's been helping me from out there through this whole process, too. So. That's one thing I see, too. Like, I watch my mom, you know? Like, and then I see that she's being my my guardian angel, you know? Like, and uh, do you think your daddy is that too for 1, you? 1,000%, I feel it all the time. most blessed kids ever you guys I got a beautiful house in Hawaii I get to work as a surf instructor up at probably the best surf school in the state of Oahu got a beautiful girlfriend got a bunch of surfboards somebody's looking out for me that's yeah. for sure that's a message that I want to leave for people too like uh, if you lost you like uh, your parents or somebody that you really love and they I can guarantee you that they will be around you your whole life and they're going to help you in every way they can. You're going to see the miracles happen in your life.